Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we are continuing our GNU Cache tutorials and we're going to be looking all about budgets. So I found that overall budgets is a little bit clunky. It's not something I've actually used before but I decided I'd go ahead and learn it and see if it's useful and yeah I can see where it can be useful. Um, I've not used budgets in QuickBooks if they're there so I can't tell you how well they uh, they relate one to another. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of go through. So the first thing that I had to do is we had to put in some things that I could indicate as, you know, something that we can budget for. So I went with marketing. And so I added uh, the same exact methodology that we used uh, in the past to add customers and invoices. We do the exact same thing to add vendors and bills. So customer invoices and vendors bills are essentially identical, they just kind of flow in the opposite direction, whereas customers pay you money, your vendors, you pay money to them. And so what I ended up doing is I set up a system where um, I actually went back and I added some vendor invoices going back into May. So I had, uh, we had two, uh, two customers in the system, so I went ahead and gave me May invoices for both of the customers. And then I actually went through and I added three vendors and I figured, hey, what type of things do you do? Marketing? Well, Google ads, Amazon ads, and an email list. So I added three vendors and then I gave myself uh, Amazon ads, which of course, if you use Amazon or Google ads, you know that you can actually set how much money to cap. So uh, I have found personally selling books that with Amazon ads, you barely ever reach what your budget is. With Google, you will reach the budget um, quite notoriously. So if you want to set a Google budget of 350, you will probably hit 350. If you want to set it up 3000, you will probably hit a Google ad budget of 3000. Whereas Amazon, you if you say I'm going to set my daily or my monthly limit at 25 bucks, you might actually get 25 bucks. More often than not, you'll get closer to you know 15 or 20, depending. Um, and then email lists. Um, when I've done uh, email list blasts for my book sales, those are fairly consistent. So basically, I just said, all right, we're going to spend 25 bucks for Amazon ads a month. We're going to spend. 50 bucks in email blasts and 350 in Google ads a month. That's just kind of what I set it up. So of course I went in and I did all of my, all of my bills. So if I go in and look at my vendors overview, uh, Amazon ads, Google ads, um, of course, Google ads, I have these, uh, put in, we're going to right click and see a vendor report. Uh, you can actually see there's only two months of payments because I'm actually showing those at, uh, the 15th of the month, which is about when Google ads clear out your accounts. And um, I'm recording this before July 15th. So that's why there's two there. But there's, for example, three on these other ones. All right. So then what we need to do is now that we have vendors set in, and then, of course, I set all of those to charge out of a marketing budget. So here is our marketing. So you can see that um, we've had... Um, We've spent, you know, the here's the amount we spent on each one of these guys, 25, 50, 350, 25, 50, 350, 25, 50. And then, of course, the next one would be the 350. And these are all going into our marketing budget so that when we actually pull a PL report, which you can find under business and income, um, then what you will actually find is under marketing, we have a $925 spent right now in marketing. So with all of that kind of being the groundwork that we did, and uh, if you missed how we got to some of those points, the only thing there that I haven't shown on previous videos is that PL report. But we'll be doing more advanced reports later. We want to get all of the other stuff built up before we get into the reports because it's important that we have data to go into these reports. So let's go ahead and have a look at budgets. So when you go under actions and under budget, we have the options for a new budget, open a budget, or copy a budget. I don't have any budgets in the system, so if I hit new or open right now, it's going to give me the exact same screen, which is going to be a new budget. If I have multiple budgets, uh, like if I only have one budget and I hit open budget, it's just going to open up that single budget. If I hit new budget, it's going to give me the option to create a new one. Um, and then if I have more than one budget, when I hit this open budget, it gives us a little dialog box to pick which one we're going to do. So let's just go ahead and hit new budget. 
So this is your basic screen when you get your budgets and what you basically have is just a list of numbers going out. We have a list of accounts over here and not much else. So if you can get a little lost in this, we understand. So there are options that we have at the top. We have the ability to open the selected account, which we don't have one selected. We can delete this particular budget and the two in the middle, we have the options and we have the estimate a budget value. So we're going to go into options. So under the options here, the first thing we're going to do, let's just call this marketing budget because that's what we're doing. And then we want to pick our, uh, you know, what's our period of time. Are we spending a certain number of months per week, per day, per month, per year? Of course, in this case, I would do month because whether you're doing Amazon ads or Google ads, then you're saying, you know, you're putting those in there and you're budgeting those per month. So you know about what you should be expecting to spend. And then you can toggle this up or down, uh, pick which month you're beginning. I'm going to go back and set my beginning as May 1st, which is effectively what we'll call the start of this, uh, this business account. Now, if you select the same week and day, what you're actually going to get is when it calculates the budget, uh, whatever day this is to start, it's going to pick the day. So if that's a Tuesday, then it's always going to be the Tuesday of that month. So this toggle button here could throw you off. And we're going to show you what why that could show uh, throw it off. Now here, um, we're actually, instead of doing 12, uh, we're actually going to cut this back just to the end of the year. So um, what is that? Seven or eight, I think. Let's just go down to eight. So go ahead and hit this so you can see that we have uh, from five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So that gets us to the end of the year. All right. Now there is this option here that it says that it estimates one. What we'd need to do is select an account first. Uh, so if we select marketing, it says it's going to estimate a budget from your past history. I don't know if this is just they have really bad documentation or if it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So if I go back and say my start date is going to be May 1st and uh, significant digits one, uh, that's fine and hit OK. You'll see what it did here is it gave me 500, 425, 000, 000. OK, and so what you would expect this would do is go back through history and say, oh, you've done 425 the month of May. You've done 425 the month of June. And so we're expecting maybe 425. It doesn't actually do that. It goes back and looks at historical data. So if that's supposed to actually fill in correctly or not, I don't know. So what you want to do is you want to actually just come in here, click these and manually change them. All right. So that's all we're going to do to make sure our budget budgets are there. Now that raises a fascinating question. Why did that first one show up as 500 or was it 450, whatever it happened to be. I'm going to show you uh, what that's going to look like in a moment. So if I actually go down and I'm going to go ahead, we will talk about the rest of these budget reports, but I'm just going to go down and pull down this budget report here and you'll see that the actual budgeted was 425, but the actual amount was 500. And you may be like, why is it doing this? Well, look at the dates up here, 5165. 738794. Seven, it's like, what kind of fool is counting? Well, the reason for this is because in our options, we set it to pick the same week and day. So if you want it to always start your budget on May 1st, June 1st, July 1st, you have to take off that button. All right. So with that, we're going to toggle that off, save that come back to our budget report, hit the refresh button at the top, and now you'll see it's 516171891. And then now our actual budget numbers are looking correct. All right. So make sure again in that option that if you are selecting that same week and day, there's reasons to do that, but it's not going to give you a consistent month or period. It's always going to go for the first you know, Monday or whatever day that happens to start on. So be aware of that option. So once we have that option set, we have our budget listed in our individual account. It does give us what is our total budgeted amount 
for this period, which in this case we're calling from May 2019 until December 2019, is saying that we're going to budget $3,400 for this, $425 a month. All right, so with that, what this is going to do is this is going to give us a uh, an ability to run budget reports. This is otherwise not super useful information, which is why I actually haven't run them in the past. So under your reports and budgets, there are several different uh, budget lists. I actually found most of these to be fairly useless. Um, we'll go through why. So budget balance sheet, this one here is going to give us um, just a, a P&L balance sheet. So you can see here the unallocated assets, 3,400. This relates to the amount of money that is in our budget. You'll see that it doesn't actually give us really useful information. We have our settings here, and one of the challenges with this uh, is that it is pulling every single account, which we may not want. So marketing is the only budget account here that's useful for us. So let's just go ahead and push apply. And you can see we still don't actually have a lot of useful information. So I don't find this particular report very useful. All right, so the budget chart, this one here, once you get it set up right, this one is a useful chart. So it kind of defaults with your checking account. And you're looking at this going, oh, uh, what's going on? <laughs> there's no budget, there's no anything, there's actual numbers. Well, because it's not polling for the right account yet. So select your options here, and then you can just make sure it's pulling the right budget, which is marketing, which it is, start of accounting period, end of accounting period. So. Uh, May up to 12, but now what I actually need to do is instead of the weird random accounts it has selected, we are instead going to come into our um, assets here and select our marketing account. Now we have useful information. So the blue is the amount budgeted. So of course this accrues up total amount per year. It's not per month. If there is a way to get this set per month, I don't know how to do it. I have actually looked for that. So of course here um, we have, here's what our display is. Oh, actually if I turn off that running sum, there we go, that should fix it. All right, turning off running sum, that fixed it. All right, of course we can do a line chart or a bar chart, whichever you want to use. I find in this case actually the bar chart seems a little bit more useful. So let's go ahead and have a look at this guy. So what's it doing here? Um, of course with this sample thing, everything looks perfect. If you're running a real system, you'll be kind of be able to see what's, you know, you'll you'll get a better, better chance, you know, see your actual numbers um, if you're doing real data. So sample data always turns out a little bit too perfect. So of course the blue is the budget, the amount we have budgeted is 425, the red is the actual amount that we spent. So you can see that here in the month of July, since I haven't paid for Google Ads yet, you can see it's only listing 75 out of our budgeted 425. So still a very useful chart to see on a very quick view what type of, uh, you know, how you're doing on your budgeting. Are you, are you over, are you under? So of course you just need to go in, select the right accounts, select the amount that you want. Of course you can um, uh, adjust your your sizes of things. This gets you, um, you know, the size of your actual chart. So if you wanted to make it bigger or smaller, you can do that. These numbers are actually going to be very useful uh, later on. All right, so you can give it a name. Um, of course, if you remember our style sheets, you can come in and change your style sheets around. Not sure if any of these actually will do anything different. Well, apparently that one did. So, uh, you know, just make sure that uh, if you do wanna use different, um, uh, different style sheets, make sure that you're doing something that's actually going to work. So let's just go back to default, and there we are. We actually have our charts back. So that's a useful chart, uh, a useful uh, budgeting tool. Also under reports, we have a budget flow. Uh, this is going to kind of show us where, uh, where the money is flowing from. This will only give us individual months at a time. So uh, income sales here. Um, here you can see that now it's not actually listed, but the first column is actually the budgeted. The second column is actually what is uh, what has been spent. 
So you can see it does give us everything here. Uh, this could be a useful chart if you are doing from multiple different accounts. Maybe you want to do a utilities thing and you're setting up a separate account and tracking where each utilities are coming and going out of. In which case you just want to come into here, select your accounts and select just the accounts that you want. So of course in this case I'm just doing marketing but uh, maybe I'm gonna include some miscellaneous and maybe some office supplies might have shown up in my marketing as well. So now if I just pull these out, uh, then what I can do is I'll see here that it's pulling out just the accounts that I selected. So this can actually be a useful one, particularly if you're splitting an individual budget system into multiple different account types. All right, uh, budget income statement. I have not figured out how to make this thing useful in any way, shape, or form. If you have, please let me know in the comments. Uh, same with budget P&L. Um, again, I just haven't found a way to make this one a useful report. Uh, we can see here what our budget it is, but it's not actually giving me any other data. And of course, the report that we showed at the very first, we didn't explain at the time, the budget report. I find this one to be, again, a very useful account. So this is going to give us, what I like most about this is it basically gives us the table view of what the bar chart was. So we have our months up here at the top. We have our actual budgeted and our actual spent. Now again, we have way too many pieces of information here. And so we just want to come into here and there's a few things you can do. One of these is we only want to show the accounts that are going to be useful for the report. So in this case, I'm just going to deselect everything that's not my marketing. Again, maybe I might pull in miscellaneous and you know something else. Let's just do those two for now. So uh, with this, we can see that my miscellaneous, let me actually do our total um, expenses as well. Okay, so here we can see that our actual and our budgeted, there's nothing actually spent for miscellaneous. All right, under our uh, display, we can show or hide the budget. So you can actually kick that off. I'm not sure why you would because that's kind of useful. Here's showing the difference. If you want to show what the difference looks like, there's a column with the totals. So the actual budgeted is 3,400. The actual spent is 925 and the differential is 2,400. And I can roll those up. So if I deselect the include accounts with zeros, then since miscellaneous did not actually have anything, then it's actually going to get rid of that one. All right, so again, you can adjust your style sheets and I'm not sure if we can make this any cleaner here without going into the style sheets. We can probably go into your style sheets though and make those cleaner. So that is all about our budgeting. So we've run reports, we've shown how to actually create the budgets, um, of course, the things that we needed were the, uh, we needed to make sure that we had some expenses in there. Of course, you can do budgets on both incomes and outflows. So you can do that and then you can create your individual charts and tables for useful information. Again, this chart is one of the most useful things there as well, but hopefully that helps you out in figuring out how to set your budgets up in GNU Cache. So thanks for taking a look at this video. Let me know in the comments down below the types of questions you have, and I will see what I can do to address those. So thanks for coming along. Take a look at the links in the description down below to help support the channel out. Uh, switch to linux.com forward slash support. You can also find me at patreon.com forward slash Tom M and thinklifemedia.com. Thanks for coming along, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.